If you are right around my age, you may recall yourself as a kid go back and forth and binge watching DayZ videos on the internet. It was something we as kids did back in the day, especially when DayZ mod was firstly announced. One of the other titles that was trending back in the day, or back in early 2000s, were the Starker series. It was an open world experience that was also semi-linear that would spice things up for those who enjoy playing open world survival games. Every individual character in the game had a story to tell. The gameplay was immersive and everyone in the game actually mattered. When you played Stalker and one of those AIs got killed right in front of you, you would feel sad and possibly devastated because prior to that moment they were probably telling you a story, a joke, they made you feel a certain way. In other terms, they displayed a human characteristics that made you care for them. Well, I'm happy to announce that the legacy of Stalker still exists to this day. This low-poly title was clearly inspired by the Stalker series, and this game in particular was suggested to me more than once at this point, and I'm actually pretty happy that I gave it a shot. First things first, this is very early access. There's plenty of players out there that don't mind early access titles, but understandably there's also a handful of players that do. Either way, I'm here to respect your decision regardless of what your opinion might be. I just ask of you that you do the same for other people, to each their own. Released on December 23rd of 2022, Far Gone features exploration in the post-apocalyptic world where you take the role of a survivor defending yourself against a variety of undead monsters and mutated bosses. The game from the get-go introduces a few new safe locations, if you will, where you can trade and sell items. But make no mistake, currency in Far Gone is very critical. The game doesn't fail to make you feel broke, almost always. You could spend 7-8 to eight hours playing the game, and yet you'll always feel like you don't have enough currency for the next best thing. But that's what the missions are for. Based on the difficulty of the mission, it will determine how much reward will be given to you. And that applies pretty much to anything you do in Far Gone. High risk versus high reward is the main takeaway here. Throughout the world, you will encounter randomly generated AIs which will be scattered around the camps and you will not miss them whatsoever. Typically, upon arriving at their destination, you will hear random gunshots which will give their location away immediately. At times, they do feel lifeless and that's when this early access title reminds you of its early stages. Monsters, on the other hand, feel slightly more improved compared to the other low-poly survival games. However, they're not perfect either. The sound of Far Gone needs some major overwork, if not rework. Don't get me wrong, certain sound effects sound incredible and very appealing, but 60% of the time, the sound you would hear would just make no sense. The sound overall feels mismatched with the gameplay itself. For instance, I was in the middle of looting a campsite and I would hear hear the lake close by as if it was right next to me. where in reality I was not anywhere near it. Same applies with zombies. When you get spotted by a zombie it would sound like it's right behind you, where in reality it's not even near you. It's not necessarily anything major, but definitely worth addressing to say the very least. Another major issue I've encountered while I was testing the game was the grass. In certain areas of the game, I would run around and notice grass being completely disconnected from everything else. It would only affect certain areas in the game, but it's still existent. It would just float in the air and it would create a visibility barrier for a player. If somehow I would get spotted by a zombie in those areas, or worse yet, by a bot that could shoot back at you, it would be nearly impossible to try to figure out where it's coming from, mainly due to the visibility. You can't see them, but oh boy, they will see you. Once again, understandably, this is an early access title and stuff like this is given, but I just need to point this out so you know what you're signing up for in advance in case you are considering buying this, so that way this does not take you by surprise whatsoever. Now, the next thing I'm about to mention is very debatable to some people, but for a game like this, I think it's very important to introduce the voiceover lines. Personally, I would find myself skipping conversations the more I played. When the missions are given, you must read the the lines in order to understand what the missions are based off of. And some of those conversations can be very long and draggy. 
Not that there is anything wrong with the mission itself, it just leads to the lack of connection, if that makes any sense. When you hear somebody speak rather than reading their lines, it affects the player more, if that makes any sense. You build a connection in a more meaningful way. I understand this is a low budget survival game, but there's no need to always hire somebody. You can always ask around in your community and people will be more than willing to participate. Let's also not forget the good that comes with Foregon. The first person camera movement is well done in Foregon. I've played games like Surround Dead, Beached, and Dead Poly, and all of them stood out in their own way. But nonetheless, none of them came even close to the first person perspective in the gameplay as Fargon did. Honestly, the first person experience was so awesome to me that I think that this game can literally just get away with not having third person at all. It will not affect the player base whatsoever. As I mentioned earlier, Stalker appears to be a huge inspiration for this game, and it pinpoints those areas very well. Instead of taking place in more of a realistic place, Fargon remains mysterious in that sense and creates its only little universe, if you will. Instead of mutated monsters, you deal with zombies, and there are certain areas in the game where it requires you to wear extra protection in order to stay away from the radiation and away from more toxicity, if you will. Unlike Stalker where you deal with mutated creatures and bad guys only, in Fargon you will also encounter bosses with high loot spawns. The environment in this game is always dark and rainy. Current maps size remains fairly decent. It's not big by any means, but it's also not small either. The game is currently developed by a solo developer, and considering the fact that the game has only been on the market for about five months-ish, the current progress speaks volume. Recently we've been informed that the roadmap for Fargon looks very promising. We also have the news about the next big update, which will reshape the game from its current state almost completely. I believe the update is being pushed until the next month, and it will bring new areas gear weight system which is awesome, voice acting something I just complained about, and custom composed music. As far as the game system, we know for a fact that Fargon will have enhanced AI, a working weather and sky system, meaning certain mornings you will have fog, which will affect your visibility, except this time purposely, not by mistake. And during certain nights, you will encounter a very toxic rain, which will force you to be near the cover, or better yet, wear a certain protection. Essentially, just making your gameplay very challenging. As far as the frame rate, I was able to maintain a stable performance with no issues. I've played on the highest settings and I haven't encountered any performance issues whatsoever. I'm sure it may vary from computer to computer, but generally speaking, as far as performance goes, I think Jordan works very hard making sure that the game runs as smoothly as it possibly can. The main takeaway here is to be patient with its development. I can assure you I've covered plenty of early access titles on my channel and Fargon is one of those games that has everything to thrive. It just requires a little bit more patience from its community and you know possibly even you. Would I recommend this game? It depends. If you're looking for a massive open world experience, I would suggest waiting until the next big update comes along, which is right around the corner, <laughs> and we'll see how that goes. The next big update will introduce a whole new map extension, which will introduce a new point of interest. As a matter of fact, the next update will change the game almost entirely. I can't stress that enough to you guys. On the other hand, if you are a massive Stalker fan like myself, I mean, it's kind of no-brainer, honestly. If you're looking for an open world survival game with a heavy currency system, this is certainly for you. Highly recommend it. But just like I said before, please be patient with it. Good luck to you, Jordan. You're doing a phenomenal job. Fargon's becoming a masterpiece before we even know it. You already know what to do. If you found this video enjoyable or helpful in any way, shape, or form, hit the like button for me, will ya? Subscribe for future content like this. And as always, this was your boy Roos, and I'm out. Goodbye.